The people you spend your time with will impact your mood, your aura, your vibration, your energy. Hi divas, welcome back to my channel. Also, we're sipping on a mocktail today. One of my favorite mocktails, which is club soda, ginger puree, and apple cider vinegar. I definitely recommend apple cider vinegar in a mocktail if you like mocktails, just because it gives you that like fermentation taste that alcohol has. And it's also just like good for you, you know? Anyways, before I get into this video, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, cause it validates me and lets me know that you like me. As you saw by the title, today we're talking about red flags in friendships. I really want to do like a dealing with series. So like dealing with bad friends, dealing with, I don't know, depression, dealing with anxiety, these type of topics. So I think I might, I think I might include this, but I don't know how to like, maybe there'll be a separate video like dealing with bad friends. But this video is seven red flags in friendships you've honestly probably seen these red flags you might have just like overlooked them but today we're gonna really like get into why they're red flags why you deserve better hello and yeah i think sometimes all it takes is like being aware being cognizant of something and that you know it's not good for you it's not a match for you for you to be able to see it better and know that this is something i should be one weary of give it a beige flag yellow flag red flag whatever you want to call it so yeah let's get right into it so it is the end of the year it's summer 28th right now so just before the new year starts i think it's a really good time just to like audit audit your life audit the people in your life really just reassessing who's bringing value who's weighing you down before you start this new year and this includes friendships right so let's just get right into the first one number one is one-sided relationships now these are the friendships and these are the people who either make everything about themselves they don't listen to you or when they're listening to you instead of responding for you they're bringing it back to themselves and it's one thing to like include your own personal situation or relationship to a topic and then see how it connects to the situation but it's another thing to just like leave it there and be like oh well oh you thought like you had a bad monday well my monday i had this this and this mm -hmm. no you deserve reciprocity one-sided relationships they also look like somebody who they never ask about your life like let's say you just answer the phone call facetime whatever it is and you know they ask you how are you and you're like yeah you know not too good oh that's unfortunate anyway i want to tell you about my day da, 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 da. that is a red flag that tells me right there when people do this to me that you're not calling to know how i'm doing you're calling to vent you're calling to not pay attention to me concerns that i have in my life you're only calling to spend the next hour 30 minutes however long i allow okay however long i allow to talk about yourself and now it's one thing if there's something pressing like hey this just happened i really want to talk about it but you can tell the difference and you know the difference when somebody is calling you out of emergency or needing somebody to hold space and when somebody's calling just to brag or take advantage of a situation or take advantage of you you know when it's not supportive and you deserve supportive people in your life you deserve people who support you who make you feel seen who make you feel heard another sign of a one-sided friendship is basically a relationship where the person only wants to do what they want to do now it's one thing to be a go with the flow person and being flexible that is a different situation right but if you're somebody who let's say when it comes to figuring out where you want to eat and you always end up eating what they want to eat you could not be advocating for yourself or communicating your needs fairly before we jump to conclusions it could be that this person can't step outside themselves and could be selfish could be only interested in doing the things that they want to do which is that sign of a one-sided friendship and i get it every once in a while like it's fine to do what other people want but when it's your turn when it's your when you're the one asking like hey like actually this is something that i want to do this is something that i want to go to this is somewhere that i want to be and the other person can't be receptive of it that is a red flag. like for me i really am just a go with the flow type of person and sometimes like i don't mind i'm really not that picky i have to be mindful of when there is a time where I want to do something or I want to go somewhere I'm vocalizing it it's okay to compromise relationships are going to require compromise and this is situational clearly but you'll be able to know this is a situation that is the other person can't compromise with you because there will have already been signs this being a one-sided relationship which is why them not being able to compromise with you in this way let's say back to the example of food if it bothers you or if it like is getting to this place then that is a sign that this is a one-sided relationship does that make sense and if you're 
feeling like this could be a one-sided relationship if you're the only one that's reaching out i would not reach out to the person i would wait and see if this person is actually going to reach out to you because sometimes we get caught up in like habit right person's been in your life for a while and now you just have this habit and routine of calling them maybe you just know each other for a long time and maybe you've just developed that pattern of calling this person and maybe they do answer i think a good way to test is to wait and see if the person will call you maybe give it a week maybe give it two weeks maybe give it three i don't know how often you guys call but i think that is a good way to if that person is being reciprocal to you if it really is a one-sided relationship. Maybe it's on their part, maybe it's on your part, right? This could also just be when relationships phase out, right? It could be a red flag, depending on if it really is you always reaching out. But at the same time, it could be an orange or a beige, whatever is in between, in the sense of, you know, you're starting a new year, you don't always need to bring in old relationships, right? Like some relationships are meant for a certain season. If you've outgrown each other, if you don't motivate each other, if you don't push each other to grow, then maybe the relationship has served its course. But again, this is situational. Like I was saying with like running its course, sometimes you grow apart, especially like, you know, we're entering a new year, you're probably thinking about the new ways you want to elevate if you're watching this video and you're a part of my audience And I know you're thinking about ways that you can elevate and ways that you can grow Right because that's just the type of people that we are here Not everybody has that mentality and sometimes keeping old relationships outdated relationships Especially people who don't have that mentality who sometimes the only value they hold is that nostalgia is the past and that might not be beneficial for you if it is a relationship that is reminding you of things that you don't want to be reminded of and at the same time they aren't aligning with your push your motivation to do more like i said some people are comfortable you know maybe you want more out of life and i feel like you do if you're watching this video like i said and some people really don't and maybe they talk down on it they talk down on your doom they talk down on your ambitions you know, wake up early trying to exercise trying to so start social media whatever it may be you know if you find these relationships that you know are one-sided and are also talking down on things that you're trying to grow for yourself that is also a red flag reciprocity is important right people that motivate you and support you and or at least say congrats or at least like acknowledge what you're doing right like reciprocity is so important in relationships and i feel like this video might just be signs of how reciprocity is not happening in relationships because that has been the biggest wake up call for me like how important reciprocity truly is and how much you gain when you when you go where you're loved right when you focus on where you're loved and sometimes to find and to go where you're loved might also look like losing okay it might look like losing people from the past or losing the things that you know right but if you want more you'll get more what you lose will be replaced and it will be replaced with something that's aligned more with you number two people who play the victim whether it's with you in an argument or with other people these are people who can't communicate these are people who don't know how to apologize these are people who can't see outside themselves these are people who can't remove their own perspective to see your own to see how you may be hurting how you may be affected by the situation that is a red flag i don't need to say anything else <laughs> number three insecure people insecure people are not capable of deep friendships insecure people possess a certain amount of shame within themselves okay what is shame right i want to google the word for you because i want to tell you the correct definition shame is an unpleasant self-conscious emotion that is often associated with negative self-evaluation motivation to quit feelings of pain exposure distrust so if somebody is feeling self-conscious right if somebody is full of negative emotions within themselves right the first person that they establish a relationship with how can they not have that feeling with you if that's all they know subconsciously and self-consciously that's all they're aware of these are people who will never be happy insecure people i've had insecure friends i've been an insecure friend insecure friends will never be happy for you these are friends that will try to silence you that will try to diminish you try to compete with you subconsciously or you know silently these are people who are only around you to see your flaws these are people who are only around you to one, figure out what makes you so special and two, how to dim it. Especially if you're somebody who is focused on self-improvement and growing yourself and being a better person, which you are because you're on this channel. They see that there's a certain aura energy that you admit that they don't possess, right? Because of this insecurity. They don't have that self-love or that self-confidence or that self-discovery or that like 
self like introspection right so they're trying to figure out what you have that they don't have insecure people insecure friends will try to be like you they might copy your lingo they might copy the way you dress they might copy the way you do your hair the way you do your makeup some things yes are healthy in the sense where it's just natural right if you spend a lot of time with somebody you might start talking like them yeah that is one thing. You'll know when it's once it's too much. You'll know once it's too much. Trust me. Trust. Everything in moderation. And this is not one of those things that are in moderation is what I'm trying to get at. Insecure people might also struggle with codependency, right? So if you're on the journey of self-discovery, of elevating yourself 2024 right around the corner, trying to reach those goals, trying to reevaluate what your goals are for the next year, they will diminish that. They won't allow that to fully happen because they will be annoyed with your self-discovery. Because the more you discover self, the less you can be co coexist be codependent codependent people there is a lack that they possess that makes them want to be with another person so if you're somebody who does not possess that lack and can be on your own they will continue to try to diminish that subconsciously and this can look like they just are never happy for you i had a friend who i was really close friends with for a long time and everything i did right i'm somebody as y'all seen by now i changed my hair a lot i like to do i really like to beat my face especially back then when i was in college i like to beat my face i love makeup i love girly things right i love clothes and this friend was always trying to like get me to wear my natural hair more and like get annoyed if i'm like you know looking better than her because i'm the hair the makeup the outfit was popping and don't get me wrong like i'm i would wear my natural hair i like diversity i like range i'm just a very versatile person i have no shame in my natural hair it's just more of a, I like to look different, like on a weekly basis. Seeing her constantly trying to like, oh wow, you're really dressed up today. Like, where are we going? Like, it's just a Monday. Like These little comments, you no, know, she can't be happy for me. She can't let me be me because it either outshines her. It shows that I have a confidence in myself. It shows that I'm not afraid to put myself out there and switch things up instead of just, you know, staying complacent with what's comfortable. I'm not afraid to have blonde hair or orange hair and do all these different things. You know, did let her say whatever she wanted because I knew that she wasn't that type of girl to begin with, right? But looking back at it now, it's like, yeah, you were insecure and you were codependent. She was very codependent. So yeah, I think some signs of friends who can't be happy for you, not necessarily insecure, but friends, signs of people who are can't be happy for you, pay attention to their body language. Pay attention to body language, okay? Pay attention to body language when, let's say you're in a group setting, if somebody compliments you, if somebody else is talking to you, if you're laughing, if you're chopping it up and people are feeling your vibe, pay attention to the people around you. Do their faces change? Does their body language change? Does their eyes roll? Does their, um, does their tone change? Are they smiling? Are they smiling when you're looking at them and then it goes away the second you turn your face, all right? These are little hints. These are little hints that people are giving that they're not happy for you and that they're a red flag. Um, number four, I think. This one, I don't really know how to like call it. Basically, friends who always bring up when you were down, okay? They don't respect your boundary. Follow me here. This is also very common with pick -me's. Let's say you were really chubby in middle school or you had acne in high school. It don't really the fucking matter, right? Or maybe the first first year, whenever you knew this friend, right? Let's say when you first met this friend, you had really bad acne, you were a little chubby, whatever, whatever. Now, three years have passed, you baddie. Okay, now let's say you're out in public and I've had this, I've had friends like this as well, who constantly try to like, now you baddie, right? And they'll be like, yeah, back when she had acne, da 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 da. Or I remember like, I used to dress a bit more tomboy, like kind of skater girl style. I'm from San Francisco, okay? <laughs> I remember I had a friend in college, a room full of black women. She was like, you don't feel like you culture appropriate skating culture um, by the way you dress? You're trying to embarrass me, something that had nothing to do with the conversation that we're talking about, and you're going out of your way to make me look bad. You're going out of your way to bring me down in a room full of people, right? And first of all how can you there is no one culture it's there's no like it's not bound to one race or anything like that and also like you don't know if i used to know how to skate like you don't know these things about me and also like am i really dressing like a skater or am i just wearing baggy pants and vans like everybody else in san francisco <laughs> you know that in that example i'm trying to highlight somebody who will try to bring you down in front of other people to make them look better right this is very common with making other friends if you're trying to make other friends if they're trying to make other friends if you're in a moment where you're looking really good like right in that moment people were cracking up at my jokes you know they were feeling the kid okay but she she wasn't having it right and that was a red flag 
Another example of this is let's say like you're let's say you're in front of a guy, right? Or like, you know, you're trying to flirt or something like that. And the same friend, like the same person, right, would probably try to remind you of when you were down, right? Or try to let other people know about when you were down, bring up different situations and stories of, you know, how you used to not be all that. Anything to make them look better, right? Anything to bring you down to make them look better is a red flag in a friendship. These are people who don't respect you. These are people who don't respect your boundaries. Okay. These are people who are trying to tear you down intentionally in front of other people, right? These are people who may not behave this way and when it's just you and them. But the second other people come around, they go out of their way to tear you down. And they feel good. They feel good to tear you down. They feel good to bring you down because they don't care and they don't respect you. You deserve friends who care and you deserve friends who respect you and you deserve friends who respect your boundaries. Especially when you have long-term friendships. I don't have a lot of long-term friendships. Like maybe the longest I have is like seven or eight years. No, actually that's not true. I have almost 10 years, one person. Now, what has made this one person my friend of almost 10 years? is the fact that we're both always constantly evolving. I change, I lived in different cities, I've done different things, I like to just push myself. Not a lot of people can understand that, I have a big thirst and desire for the world. Not a lot of people will understand that because people get complacent, people get comfortable. I have some friends that still live in my hometown, my small town. I feel like if you have a lot of friends from your past, like I'm speaking to a certain type of person right now. If you have a lot of friends or friendships from your past, maybe when you feel like two, three lifetimes ago, when you were two, three different people, like, you know, that, that long ago, right? They, they will try to drag you backwards, right? Because they don't understand the direction that you're going in. And that's why, like for me, of course this is situational, this is just, my, what I have experienced. They're very complacent and comfortable with where they're at and I don't want to fall into that trap. I am very much so someone that is a product of my environment. If I see people doing something, I will do it, you know? Of course, that which is why I move so much, right? If I don't feel like this in the environment, environment or neighborhood is serving me anymore, I move, I get out of it so I can feel what the new vibration and energy is of this, the new environment, right? Now I live in London, I'm, in, I'm getting my master's, I'm around people who like it's pretty well off school, like I feel like I feel closer to like being more successful, I'm trying to do more habits that make me feel more successful, like these are the, the things that I like to do, this is the environment, this is the headspace I need to be in to reach those goals. Some people, they don't want to see relationships end. So they'll do what they can to keep you unintentionally or subconsciously in the same place as them because who wants to feel left behind, right? But it's either you go with it or you get left, right? I feel like I went off topic there, but I hope that made sense. Another red flag, this is like a small one, friendships that use you as a placeholder. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. These are the friendships that keep you around until they get into a romantic relationship. That goes back into the insecurity, you know, that goes back into the insecurity of not seeing their value on their own, which is why they need to be with someone all the time. I think that's also like, I think somebody who uses you as a placeholder before they get into a romantic relationship, you'll be able to see those signs because they'll, they'll have codependent tendencies, right? Because they can't be alone. So they'll use you as a way to soothe that until a romantic connection comes in. I've been on the receiving side of this where I lose friends once they get into a relationship, which is some things are natural. Like some things, of course, like they do come. But then if I'm not if I'm not hearing from you until you break up with this person, like that makes me feel like I was a placeholder. And then you come back and try to hang out with me all this time and not have new friends and you're mad I got new friends and da da da. Well, what you think I was doing all this time? Twiddling my thumbs waiting for you? Like, yeah, if a person is putting their romantic relationship over you, in an unhealthy way, right? Then they're telling you what they value in your second. You're second in their eyes. And it, you know, I'm sure people have some sort of subconscious hierarchy of relationships in their life. There there has to be some better balance, a better structure, and there's people who know how to do that better, you know? People who have multiple kids, they don't make their kids feel like one is their favorite, right? So that applies here too. If a friend disappears when they're in a romantic relationship, that's a red flag. Uh, gaslights you. I don't think I really need to get into that. Um, if you walk away from any conversation with any friend, I guess this higher chance with somebody who plays the victim like i was saying earlier if you walk away feeling confused from a conversation like you don't know what just happened that's gaslighting if you were so sure going into a conversation that this is how you felt because that's how you felt and now you feel something different or they sprung something on you or some emotional sob story so you could give them their sympathy and play the victim that is a red flag that is a red flag i don't give a fuck 
that's a red flag. Another red flag is not liking your friends. They don't like your other friends, right? I think that's another sign of codependency. I had this with the same person who also left me for a friend, like romantic relationship. It sounds weird to say, but like, yeah, like they won't like your other friends. They won't like your other friends besides the friends that they had before you and them were friends. That makes sense. I had, I've been in situations like this and I'm a very social person. Like I said, I want a lot out of life. I like to talk to different people. I like to change my hair and these are things that like I'm that are not going to change about me. And I like range. Yeah, if, to, if they don't like your friends, and like it's very visible, like it's not even like your friends, it's one thing if your friends did something to like upset them. But if they're just like every time you they meet your friends and your friends are saying, you know, she wasn't the warmest, that's a red flag. <laughs> that is a red flag. You, know, I had a friend like that. Every time I would introduce her to somebody, I was like, oh yeah, what'd you think of this person? They're like, yeah, you guys are a little different. Or like, you know, you're, she's not as warm was always like the response. I think. I don't even know what number we're on anymore. But the next one is people who gossip. If your friend is gossiping, um, I'm gonna leave this short and sweet. If your friend is gossiping to you about other people, best believe she's gossiping about you to other people. That's it, that's it. I know I talked a lot about like long-term relationships, like long-term friendships, and I'm not trying to bash them. I just feel like, especially if you're like an ex-people pleaser like I am, people from your past, especially if they're your long, like long-term friendships, when you, exhibited those characteristics and now you don't they're going to always try to bring you back and bring you down to when you did right because it worked in the past right it worked to manipulate you in the past in this way and i found myself in this situation with a lot of people and that is why i couldn't be friends with them not even because they triggered me or like they triggered me to be people pleasers but it was more of the constant disrespect for the person that i'm becoming and the fact that i'm saying no right and the fact that i'm putting myself first because people people who have people pleasing tendencies or were people pleasers if you try to befriend somebody after you've put yourself in a situation where they can extort you friendshiply like in that way there is no going back because why the only relationship that this person would know right especially if they're narcissistic they're always going to try to drag you back to when they had more control right because they gained and now they're not gaining and then if they're not also on this journey of reevaluating their self they're not going to be interested in this relationship right or they're going to keep trying you to get back to where you were because they enjoyed the challenge so that's where that was coming from. Um, so if you don't have this people pleasing past tendencies and everything else that I said, whatever I said before, whatever what I was saying, <laughs> then it doesn't apply. But yeah, I think that's everything that I have for this video. But yeah, protect yourself out here. Protect your energy, protect your heart, protect your spirit, protect your mind. Especially as we start 2024, if you're watching this when 2024 starts or before 2023 ends. So hopefully I will post this before the year ends. The people you spend your time with will impact your mood, your aura, your vibration, your energy. And also your network is your net worth, right? You become who you spend the most time with. So cut them holes out when you see these signs the first time. And I promise you, you'll be in a different situation. Love you lots. Thanks for watching, divas. If you made it to the end, please subscribe and like this video because it helps me out a lot. Have a great rest of your day and happy new year.